Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I am so excited to do. It is going to be the best and worst of the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried so far in 2022. I'm gonna be ranking all of the palettes I've tried this year from my least favorite to my top favorite. We have over 30 palettes to get through in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, I typically start with an outfit of the day. We've been doing this for a little over a year now. This is what I'm wearing today. I just have on some dark shorts from Express, flip flops from Kohl's, and then this shirt is from a local boutique called Hotties. It just has like this going on. I actually bought it when I went on vacation at the beginning of the year, but I did do some filming with this look with the new ColourPop collection in the Springs, I believe it's what it's called. And I felt like this was the only shirt to go along with my makeup look. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna wear it. I did film this look for my Instagram. I think I'm probably gonna put it up as a short here on YouTube as well if you just wanna see a quick demo with the collection. I used the eyeshadow palette, a highlighter, an eyeliner, and then also a lip product. And I really like how it came out. I feel very fun. I also did use a new blush from Benefit. I have a little tutorial with this one as well. And a couple new products that I just picked up from Sephora. I recently did a pretty big Sephora haul and I did a try on and not, not, not all went well. Not all went well in that video. I am excited to do this one. Ranking makeup is one of my favorite things to do. I do a series every single month on my channel where I rank all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried that month. And then typically through the halfway year, this is where I talk about best and worst makeup. I rank the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried. I do already have my worst makeup of 2022 up. The best of will be coming, but I did wanna do eyeshadow palettes next because like I said, it's just one of my favorite videos. When I do my series monthly, I do talk about older products as well. It's not just the new eyeshadow palettes. And I also talk about singles, shadow sticks glitters anything like that I include for this video because we do have so many to get through I want to include just the new palettes that I tried so far this year I think pretty much everything is a new release in 2022 except maybe one palette was an older one in my collection but I tried it for the first time this year like I said we have over 30 palettes I'm gonna be ranking from 29 to 1 because a few palettes I did uh, put into their collections but before we get started I want to say I do link all of my makeup down below like I said I have to look up on my Instagram but I always list and link everything that I'm wearing clothes anything like that jewelry is always in my description box and as always if you're new I hope that you will subscribe I love to chat about makeup and try makeup and I just consider myself a chatty channel but ranking is one of my favorite things starting too. off from the bottom I think I'm gonna make a lot of people angry for this because whenever I talk about not liking the Pat McGrath palettes I tend to get a lot of hate I like Pat McGrath as a brand <laughs> I really do, but her eyeshadows tend not to be my favorite. But also at the same time, I tend to have pretty bad reactions to her palettes. Now, this does not happen to absolutely everybody. There's also eyeshadow palettes that people have had reactions to that I haven't had reactions to. I can only rank based on my personal experience, my personal preference, my personal liking, and that's how I go down in my videos. But at the bottom, I have a couple palettes from Pat McGrath. So at 29, I have from her Bridgerton collab. This was a $65 eyeshadow palette. I mentioned this recently in my worst makeup of 29. 2022 or makeup I wasted my money on because the majority of the products I mentioned in there I did purchase myself versus getting in PR and again $65 palette for six eyeshadows two of them gave me eye reactions the two more red shades here so that windows it down to a four pan palette for $65 and to me I just I don't see the hype with Pat McGrath eyeshadows I think her mattes overall are incredibly hard to use there's one shade in her divine rose palette that I think is really beautiful, more of that mauve shade. But other than that, I think her mattes are pretty difficult to use. A lot of the shimmers can be very pretty, but to me, I have way better quality eyeshadows in my collection, especially for the price tag. So this one was a really big bummer for me. And then most recently, this is new to my collection. So I'm gonna point out the ones that are very new to me. I just thought that I would include them all in this wrap up. So take these with a grain of salt is what I usually say when I'm talking about something that's fairly new. But at 28, I put in from Pat McGrath her Midnight Voyage. I just picked this up from Sephora. Again, I do have that try on video and you can see me struggling in here. This palette retails for $29 and you have the six shades in here. I love me a good purple moment and I was really excited to get this palette. I bought this myself. I wanted to like it. Dark purple was so patchy. It was so hard for me to use. Even the middle shade, which I was very softly blending out, just kind of blending away and it was very patchy. The shimmers looked super beautiful on. 
but I had fallout all over my face by the end of the night. And once again, I had a really bad eye reaction just within a couple hours of wearing this palette. My eyes were super itchy. I literally pulled like goop out of my eyes when I'm having an eye reaction. I was in so much pain. My eyes last night were super red. I woke up at one point and they were completely crusted over. So something about the Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette just does not work for me. Again, I like to say that is personal to me. I know some other people have had reactions to them. But like I said, I know people who have had reactions to other palettes that I haven't. So that's a very, that's more of a unique situation. But for me, I purchased both of these palettes and I'm putting them at the bottom because I can't even wear them. <laughs> which is a big bummer. 27, I have the e.l.f. and Dunkin' Donuts collection. This one was sent to me in PR and included three different eyeshadows, three different eyeshadow palettes, so I'm just kind of grouping them all together. But we have Boston Cream, which I was kind of most excited for because I really liked that pop of yellow. Um, this one too, the Chocolate Frosted with Sprinkles. I was like, ooh, the blue, the yellow. I was like, let's get it. And then we had Strawberry Frosted with Sprinkles. These run for like four or five dollars. They're incredibly inexpensive, but the quality is just not there. They don't really show up on the eyes. The shimmers are pretty lackluster. I tried all three of the palettes. I tried a handful of different looks with them, and I just... The quality is just not there. So sometimes it's like great if something is more affordable, but if it's not good quality, it's not gonna work. For me personally, I would rather spend a few extra dollars and get something that's gonna work really well for me. And number 26 from ColourPop, I have their Avatar palette. I am on ColourPop's PR list, so I do get quite a few palettes from ColourPop. I don't keep absolutely everything to try. I do give quite a bit away, but especially if there's palettes that either I'm interested in or it seems like a lot of people are interested in, I will try to do some looks and give my reviews, especially to talk about, you know, they release so much. What do I think is actually worth it? What do I think out of all the palettes are coming out with should you actually pick up? But for the most part, a lot of the ColourPop palettes are coming just kind of in the middle for this video. But for the Avatar palette, it's like, it's one of those palettes that's like it's fine the color scheme didn't blow me away i'm not familiar with the collaboration so that didn't get to me and this is one of those palettes where it's like i don't feel like this is the really good color pop formula it's the hard part with color pop is i feel like they have very different formulas across their eyeshadow palettes there's not a whole lot of consistency there and this to me i think they have a better i think they have better quality formula in some of their other palettes so that one is just kind of sitting in my collection. Also from ColourPop at number 25, this is one of their newer palettes. This is the Getting Fresh. So this is one of their mega palettes. It's a 30 pan palette. Personal preference, which is obviously how I have to do my videos. I'm not into these larger eyeshadow palettes. If you are, this might be a good option for you. I like something that's a little bit smaller. You will see when I get to my top products, like you will understand it is literally the complete opposite of this eyeshadow palette. And it's just so large. I feel like it dupes itself. I feel like there's other palettes from ColourPop where you could like break this down into like the six pans or the nine pans and you can get that palette from ColourPop instead of having this really big one. Again, quality is just kind of like so-so for me in here. Some of the shimmers I thought were pretty, but it's like, this is one where like I wanted to like it, but I just, I'm just kind of like, nah. At number 24, I have from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Amrezy palette. So I, I believe this is the only one that was not released also in 2022, but I tried it for the first time because I realized I'd had it for a while and I still had not tried it. I was like, Samantha, you need to get it together and you need to try this palette. And to me, I'm like, okay. And I don't know, maybe if it was a newer palette, maybe I would reach for it more. But after I tried it a couple of times, I was like, all right. And it's just kind of gone back to sitting in my collection. I like the Anastasia formula. You're gonna see another Anastasia palette ranked pretty high in this video. This one to me though, I don't, it's just, it just doesn't really do much for me. It's very, very neutral. It has a few pops of color in there. I like neutral palettes, don't get me wrong. But again, I just feel like kind of uninspired when I look at this at one. 23 and 22, I have two more from ColourPop. I have the Darth Vader and also the Star Wars. I think I put Darth Vader at 23 and Star Wars at 22. I'm like, I don't know. I had to look up to see if these were separate palettes because I at first I confused myself when I was going through all of my notes of the palettes I used. I was like, wait. Am I talking about the same thing? And then I had to look up to see if one was released in 2022 or not. I'm, I'm like, I was all sorts of confused when it comes to this. I don't know Star Wars. Like, I know Star Wars, but I haven't seen it. I don't really care about it that much. But this one, to me, this is a nine pen palette. And it's like, it's fun. Again, I'm just going off personal preference. This is a color scheme I'm not going to use very much. Some of these darker tones, like, I'm just, I'm not going to go for it. I liked the pop of red in there, but... 
just doesn't get me going. And then I had the Star Wars palette. This one I ranked just a touch higher because they do have some of these special kind of like more tie dye shades in there, which I thought was cool. But again, it's a bigger palette, a little bit more on that darker side, just shadows that I'm not using as much. If we have complete opposite makeup preferences, you know, you might just want to flip this whole video. But if you're kind of like me, like quick, easy looks, a lot of times that doesn't mean darker shadows. They can tend to be a little bit harder to work with. Um, but you know, this is just another one that it's like, okay. I tried it going with the influx of ColourPop at 21 I have in the limelight. I'm super disappointed about this because this was a palette that had I not been on ColourPop's PR, I definitely would have purchased this. Green is one of my favorite colors to work with. So when I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, give it to me. And that there was like that pop of pink in there. I was like, I can do so much with this palette. It's one of those that just did not impress me as much. The quality did not impress me as much. I felt like I felt like the majority of the looks I, I was doing was all coming out the same, even though it's not necessarily a monochromatic palette. Like there's different shades in here, there's different tones of green, but it just was all becoming so, so similar. If the Getting Fresh intrigued you, I feel like this one can definitely be found in that palette. But again, I'm just kind of like, I was bummed about it. I really thought that that was gonna be a home run for me. And I was just kind of meh. And then I have two palettes. I put these close to each other because they they really remind me of one another. So both from ColourPop, we have the Secret Admirer and then the By the Rose. So pretty, pretty similar. Like I said, ColourPop tends to dupe themselves quite a bit. Secret Admirer at 20 and the By the Rose at 19. A very kind of pink red color scheme going on. I like the quality just slightly better in the By The Rose, like the mattes felt a little bit softer. I mean, they're both pretty palettes, but again, they're just kind of sitting in my collection and I love that color scheme. I love wearing pinks and reds and purples and mauves is like one of my favorite colors to wear, but just a lot of color pop, which is kind of middle ground for me. At number 18 I have from Urban Decay, this is the Wild Greens palette. This is not a bad palette. You said that I, obviously I do this as a career. Uh, I try a lot of new makeup. I have a really large collection. So even though sometimes I feel like that's maybe obvious, I feel like I need to point it out that I'm not necessarily like the average consumer that is reviewing makeup. And sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit tougher on products because I'm like, oh, it's not as exciting or it's not as unique. And it's like, that's not what everyone's going for. And not everyone is consuming beauty content on a daily and hourly basis like I am, right? So when it comes to the Urban Decay, it's like, if you like a neutral palette that's very easy to use, the shadows are soft and blendable and buildable, you have a few pops of color without being anything super overwhelming. Like it's called the Wild Greens, but it's very, it's like the Tame Greens. It's the Tame Greens palette. And I think that there's an audience for that. It's one of those that I'm like, ah, I think it's okay. Um, but actually there's gonna be an, uh, an Urban Decay palette at, more at the top of this video that kind of surprised me because I'm gonna say some similar things but I liked it even more since it's coming at the top of the video. At number 17 from Color of the Pop, I have the Winnie the Pooh collection. This is a cute one. You know, like we're kind of getting to the middle where I feel like I'm gonna get kind of stuck on what it is I'm trying to say because I'm kind of saying the exact same thing because I'm just talking about a bunch of eyeshadow palettes in this video and I feel like there's only so many ways you can describe them. But with the Winnie the Pooh collaboration, I thought that that was super cute. I liked the honey pots. I liked the highlighters that came out in this collection. The eyeshadow palette, while I liked that pop of yellow and some of the greens were fun, kind of reminds me a little bit of the wild greens from Urban Decay where it's like, it's a cute palette. It's very wearable. Um, it's very easy to use. It's just not the most exciting one in my collection or the one that is the most reached for by me. From number 16, I have from Sydney Grace. This is their Be Mine palette. They definitely have a really nice eyeshadow formula. Again, some of the shades get kind of dark. The middle row is definitely my favorite. That's kind of what I tended to go for when I was trying out this palette. Uh, I don't really have a lot of bad things to say about this one. It's just kind of one of those that I don't reach for very often. It's not like one of my staples that I'm like, oh, I need to go into this one. Typically, if I'm going into a Sydney Grace palette, I'm going into the Tiny Marvels, which was a collaboration from Mel Thompson, but the Be Mine was still pretty. At number 15 from Dose of Colors, I have their Golden Hour palette. I was really excited when they were releasing palettes again, so I, I picked up the Golden Hour from their website. Now, I love me a good brown smoky eye moment, a neutral brown, just putting one matte brown shadow on my lid and calling it a day. The only drawback to me with this palette, and it's something that I obviously knew going into it, but there is a pressed glitter, and I just don't wear pressed glitters on my eyes very often. I do have very sensitive eyes, so there is that, but I just haven't gone into that shade, so it's really like a four pan palette for $32. I mean, still the Pat McGrath is gonna be more expensive if you think about it that way. I get way more use out of this one, but it's like, 
it just it's kind of falling in the middle of the pack to me and it's one of those like I wish I would have liked it more it's not a bad palette it's not bad quality I just I wish I would be reaching for it more. Right, we're starting to move away from the middle of the packs and going into some of the palettes that I've really enjoyed this year. So from ColourPop, see, they're not all mediocre, but there's just so many <laughs> to be able to rank from. I have the One and Done, which is coming in at number 14. This is another palette that just really caught my attention when it was coming out. I thought the collection was really well done. They had some really fun lips, uh, lip colors with it. Also the blushes. I tried out their hot pink blush in here and I thought it was super beautiful. I've done some really pink looks. I've done some very neutral looks with this one. I did a really beautiful all matte look with this palette that I thought was really pretty. I like it. I feel like I like this formula a lot and this was one that was definitely intriguing me and I felt like I kept wanting to reach for it and create more looks with this This is one. a brand new palette to me. It is what I have on my eyes. So again, I'm going to give that preference and say take this with a grain of salt. But I actually was a lot more pleased with this palette than I thought that I was going to be. From ColourPop, this is the In the Springs. And this one is a very blue orange eyeshadow palette now i love orange i'm not so much into blue we have some neutrals in here but it's what i have on my eyes today and i just thought it was so pretty i do also have a lip from the collection on it and again everything that i have on my face is linked in my description box but this one when i opened it i was like wait a second i want to do an orange look i want to do a monochromatic orange look i want to do a blue look i want to do a neutral look i want to play with some of these shimmer like it was one that when I saw it online, I was like, oh, okay, like it doesn't really turn my attention. And then when I got it and opened it, I was like, wait, I feel like I could do a lot with this. And it was really easy to play with today. I used kind of this neon orange and then this shimmer in hot tub. I mixed the brown and the blue on my lower lash line. I used the blue eyeliner. I thought that it came out really pretty and there's several more looks that I want to do with this one. But again, I've only done one look with it so far. I'm just kind of sneaking it in here. I didn't want to put it any higher than that just because I've only done the one look. So just full transparency there. Really just the first impression. At number 12, I have a collaboration with Ofra Cosmetics and Leora. So this is her Beyond Words palette. So this is a mini mixed palette that includes eight eyeshadows and then a bronzer, a blush, and a highlight. I think this is really beautiful and it definitely really speaks to Leora. I like the purples in here. I also really enjoyed the face shades. The highlighter is really beautiful. The blush I thought was super stunning on. I really liked that it was a more neutral blush also. So I enjoy that you get the mixture of the eyeshadows and also the face shades. I am an affiliate with Ofra my discount code is Samantha if you're interested in picking up the Leora collection. And number 11, this is the other palette from Urban Decay that I was mentioning. This is their Naked Sin. This is not a palette that I expected to... I don't even know if I thought I was going to use this one, right? This came to me in PR and I was like... Okay. Uh, what am I going to do with this? And I have used this palette probably 10 times. This is one that it's just one of those... I'm gonna use the words like basic, neutral, perhaps even a little bit on the boring side of a palette. But this palette reminds me, once again, that not everyone out there who is wearing makeup is consuming beauty YouTube and beauty Instagram and beauty TikTok and only trying to find the most unique eyeshadow palettes or something that's super different. There's a lot of people that want their basics and their staples. And this to me really made me remember that, that there was a time where I also was just going through eyeshadows. Like I went through a single eyeshadow from CoverGirl like it was my job. I mean, I would pan that thing all the way up with the little, little, what am I trying to say? The little sponge sticky mo bobby to put it on my eyes. Oh yeah, and then I would just go and get another one. Like there was a time like that and there are still people out there like that. I really like this one. If I'm just going for something really super simple, this is what I am throwing on my eyes recently and I'm just getting way more used. This was one I truly didn't even think I was gonna try it. I thought I was just gonna put it into a giveaway or give it to one of my friends. I even have someone in mind who I thought might like this palette and I end up using it quite a bit. Moving into our top 10, top 10, I have from Hindash, this is the Monochromatic Palette. This is a palette that I ended up enjoying way more than I thought that I was going to. I got this one in PR and I was a little bit intimidated by it because it's supposed to be a very multi-use palette. You can use for contour, bronzer, blush, eyeshadows, obviously. And I was like, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. This is so easy to use. The shadows are so soft and smooth and blendable. 
whether you're using it on your eyes, whether you're using it as bronzer, what like this reddish tone blush is so beautiful. I've done the hot pink as a blush and you really have so many options with how it goes from this kind of ombre. There's so much that you can do with this palette. It is all matte, so sometimes I like to add in a shimmer and I've done all matte looks with this and then I've come in with another palette and popped the shimmer in or like a ColourPop Super Shock, but it's so pretty and it's so easy to use. This is one that kind of surprised me, but I was really reaching for this one a lot. Coming in at number nine, I have another collab palette. This is with Heather Austin and Adept Cosmetics. This palette is so super beautiful. Heather did such a wonderful job in the Adept Cosmetics. This was my first time trying their formula and it is so beautiful. The mattes are not hard to use. Again, not a makeup artist. Mattes can give me difficulties, especially some of the darker mattes, but not every formula is like that and not every brand does that to me. Like, I truly don't have an out against Pat McGrath. But this one is beautiful. There's some really cool duo chromes in here and those shades are just so easy and smooth and wet looking and just fun to use on the eyes. I love Heather's channel and what she embodies is like makeup is about having fun and I love that because sometimes I think we take things a little bit too seriously when it comes to makeup and how eyeshadows blend or how someone else chooses to place their liner things like that like it's like there's so many bigger issues there's so many bigger issues in the world that I like sometimes I can't figure out why it is that we get frustrated on things like that but whenever I watch Heather's videos, she's like, makeup is just supposed to be fun. And I'm like, yes, girl. And that, to me, like, she really embodied that in this palette. And I think it's fantastic. Number eight from Natasha Denona, I have her pastel palette. This is such a nice one. And I really wasn't sure what to expect. This is a $65 eyeshadow palette. Again, I bought it myself. I like pastels, so they're not necessarily my absolute favorite or go-to. But I was like, you know what? I really like the Natasha formula. It's super easy to use. I'm just gonna try this one out and I ended up liking it way more than I thought that I was going to and I feel very inspired when I look at this palette. Another thing that I say about me is I don't have the most creative, the most visually creative mind. Sometimes I have to look at an eyeshadow palette for a little bit longer. I have to try to do some rearranging in my mind in order to get a look to come to my mind. I have to look at a lot of inspo photos, that sort of thing. But with this palette, it was like, I wanna play with the yellows and the pinks and the purples and the greens. And the first look that I did with this one was actually a blue look, which blue is my least favorite eyeshadow color to wear. That's just kind of what this palette brings out in me, which I think is super fun. So thankfully my money was not wasted on that one. And number seven, another collab palette. This is with Odin's Eye and my friend Aniela Kniekvist. This is the Hello palette. This is such a fun one. Again, I love me some greens. So there's some fun greens in here, some fun pinks. There's the duo chromes. I really stuck out to me this year. I did try them last year, right? In 2021, I did try them last year, but I feel like their releases this year have just been really, really impressing me. I actually reached out to them and I was like, would I be able to get an affiliate code? Because I am liking your products so much and I feel like I'm recommending them so much. I have even more Odin's Eye to show in this video. And they actually did, my discount code with them is Samantha if you're ever interested in picking anything up. But I have just been so impressed and I think Angie did such a good job. I love that it's colorful without being like, too, too much because I like me some color, but I like more on like the monochromatic side where Angie's definitely much more bolder than me. But this is like that perfect medium mixture for whatever it is that you wanna do. And I think it's such a fun and one. Number six I have from Patrick Ta. This is the Major Dimension 2 eyeshadow palette. This one is a pretty expensive palette as well. How much is this one? It's definitely in the 60s, right? Or is it like $58? Both of those are in my head, but there was definitely a time where rosy palettes were having their moment. I did a video ranking my rosy eye eyeshadow palettes because there was so many coming out. I really do like the Patrick Ta palettes though. I purchased both the one and two on my own. I like the addition of the cream shadows. The shimmers I think are so beautiful. They're very easy to use. Oftentimes I'm just using them with my fingers and the mattes I find really, really easy to blend. So this one is more of a higher price tag, but I really do use it. I think I got this one when it was on sale for like 20% off, but I did buy the first one at full price, but I really like them and I use them often. Number five, I had to put in the Anastasia Nouveau palette. This is a newer palette to me, but I've already used this palette, I'm gonna say six times. I think I've done four different looks now across my platforms. I did a first impression on YouTube. I did two tutorials on my Instagram. I've done one for my TikTok, and then I've just been using it just on my own here. This is super beautiful and 
I'm excited about that because I feel like Anastasia really hasn't had a release that I'm very excited about for quite some time and her palette releases used to be such a big talk in the online beauty community but this palette has been so easy to use I really like the different shades in here I like some of these greens I did the an all purple look with that shade which I thought was beautiful the mattes are easy to use like, I am really impressed with this one and I just I wasn't sure but I hopped out about it and I ran to Sephora the day that this became available in part so I obviously could create content for it because that's part of my job but I was also curious to try it out and I'm super happy that I enjoy it. And number four I have two palettes from a Kaleidos. This came out in their Smoky Nostalgia collection so another indie brand. I have more indie to talk about at the top of this video which I love so much but this one is the Black Jasmine. They don't have the names on the palette, so which kind of drives me crazy. And then this one is the Cold Brew. I love both of them. Like the Cold Brew really embodies what I love. Those, you know, the brown smoky eye, but that shimmer is so beautiful. And then the Black Jasmine is just that very fun, cool toned, just like if you want to feel Mm, like wearing the black jasmine just makes me feel that way but the quality on these are great the whole collection i thought was really well done the blushes from the collection the lip products in there i mean i was really really impressed i love the packaging on these kind of like that lace detail to them these were fun ones. At number three i i will really say three two and one i feel like any of these could have taken the top spot I love them all so much, but at number three, I put in the Sigma New Mod. Again, the rosy toned eyeshadow palettes were having their moment, and this one is super beautiful. The Sigma eyeshadow formula is one of my favorites, and it has been for years. These are 14 pen palettes. They come with the double-ended brushes, and this one is, once again, just so beautiful. I was able to go to the Sigma Beauty uh, launch party in Minneapolis for this collection, which had me so excited, and it just makes me even more excited when I saw that it was going to be for this palette because it screams my names. I love these tones. I love the mauve tones and the palette is just beautiful. The quality is so easy to work with. The shimmers are stunning. The mattes are easy to use and they're buildable and blendable. Two of my favorite words that I say so much on my channel and I even like the outer packaging, the velvet feel to this. Like if these are your tones, this is going to be a great one to go for. I am an affiliate with Sigma and my code is Samantha if there's anything that you're thinking of grabbing, but that's such a beautiful number one. Number two, like I said, I have more Odin's eye in here. This is the Main 2 palette. I know that I can't pronounce that quite correctly. Angie tried to teach me in New York, but I feel like I've already forgot how to pronounce it. But this palette from Odin's eye really caught me off guard with how much I loved it. So like I said, I've liked their palettes in the past. Angie's collab I thought was great, but this one I was like, what the heck dog? I can't stop wearing this. The purple looks that I've done with this palette have been some of my favorite looks that I've done this year just hands down I had so many people complimenting me people here at the complex I went out to dinner with some youtubers they were all like what eyeshadow are you wearing I need to buy this the quality like I said is fantastic in here and this is just such a fun one it's colorful without being too much for me since I am you know not the most of the colorful eyeshadow queens but it has enough if I want to do something fun like that like the orange in here is so beautiful but again the purples really stole the show for me really really impressed this palette like i was a little bit shook of how much i enjoyed this one i know it sold out pretty quickly it has been restocked i'm not sure when this video is going up but hopefully it's still going to be in stock and again you can get it at a discount with my code samantha so i had you know the rosy tone eyeshadow palette i have a little bit more colorful of a palette but at number one these teeny tiny little trios these are from kasha beauty these are their eyeshadow stacks I have been raving about these. I did do a video ranking all of the palettes that I tried in May, and I put these in the top spot as well. And again, any of the three could have gone in the top spot, and I truly stared at the three for a while, and I was like, ah, oh, I don't like, I don't know what to do. And I, and I'm trying to remind myself like I don't need to take it super seriously like it's it's just makeup and it's okay but I really enjoyed these so much these are uh two of their new stacks one is in peach Madeline, so they have a matte on the bottom and then kind of a glitter topper in the middle and then a really beautiful shimmer on top and then the other one is in mauve bouquet so same thing matte glitter topper and then a shimmer 
These are just so easy to use and so beautiful to work with. Once again, when I wear these, I get so many compliments. I had my friend Risa Does Makeup was texting me asking what eyeshadow I was wearing in an Instagram story. And it was, I believe it was Mauve Bouquet. I have had to send the links to these palettes to my friends here at the complex because they've seen me wearing them and been like, wait, I need that. My sister was at Sephora trying to find these. Uh, when I mentioned these in a TikTok video, people were saying, where can I find those? I had to make a whole separate video of where you can find Kaja Beauty because I was getting so many questions of where you can get these at. Again, I will link everything that I'm talking about down below, but these stacks are just so nice. And if you are someone who has the same makeup preferences as me, again, you like something smaller, maybe that's like really quick to use, these are going to be it and they look stunning. When I put these on my eyes and I do all three, I do the matte all over and then I put down the uh, shimmer on top and then the glitter topper from the middle on top of that and it just makes the eyes pop so much and it looks like you put so much time in your makeup when all it is is three shadows and it went by like that so 26 dollars. i love how small they are they're very easy to put in like a travel makeup bag i brought peach madeline on my new york trip i'm getting ready uh within the next week of as i'm filming i'm going on vacation i'm probably gonna put one or both in my makeup bag because they're just so easy to take along but those are beautiful but other than that that is going to do it for today's video the best and worst eyeshadow palettes i've tried so far in the year of 2022 i'd love to know have you tried any of these what are some of your favorites or some of your fails. Leave me some comments and let me know. And as always, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.